common symptom that we spoke of in our introductory video was about hirsutism and right now we're going to be discussing that in depth what it is and how it is that somebody who's suffering from PCOS can also have hirsutism as a symptom and how that can be treated. So let's start with you Neha first right now on this one. What's your take on hirsutism and how is it that you kind of you know diagnose, yeah. assess and treat from you know a dietary point of view? Yeah, so hirsutism is actually a very very confident shattering symptom. I've had clients literally crying in front of me and being like, I, I can't look at myself in the mirror. This is not, I mean, this mm. is not me. Yeah. Where's my feminine side? And I just don't feel like a woman, you know? It's so it's so sad to see that because literally, I mean, you can't, You. it's difficult to live with that symptom. Yeah. But you have to understand that it all, everything that's happening to you has a root cause and it all starts from inside. And you need to understand what's happening inside to actually heal the outside, right? So, um, with hirsutism, insulin resistance has a major connection. Inflammation definitely, which we spoke about in acne, inflammation drives acne and hirsutism both because your cells become more sensitive to DHT and they start, mm -hmm. the receptors are more sensitive to DHT over here and here, this part of the face when you have inflammation. But again, insulin resistance is one factor which drives hirsutism again. So, you know, with your insulin being all over the place and your testosterone being ex excessively high. Now, you could be having testosterone coming from your ovaries or from your adrenal glands. So, if you're very stressed out, you could be having your testosterone released from the, te from the uh, adrenal glands, which is what DHEAS tells us. And if you have uh, PCOS anyways, you're going to have hormones, the testosterone coming from your ovaries as well. So, basically, your body's you know, releasing more testosterone that's needed. Mm. That's inflammation which is driving the hirsutism and there's insulin resistance which is adding to the problem. So, uh, you need to start treating the insulin resistance. Obviously, removing all the refined stuff that we spoke about and um, doing a lot of uh, good fats, complex carbs, good proteins, lean proteins. So, if you're a non-vegetarian, okay, you could do lean protein but doing more plant-based proteins. So what I've seen in my practice is the more, more the person goes plant-based, the more they're getting the nutrients, the fiber, the antioxidants to kind of heal the gut, to lower the insulin resistance, to cleanse the liver and then reduce inflammation and get all these symptoms under check. Mm -hmm. So uh, the hair growth starts getting finer the more you start treating on the root cause and obviously with external stuff but you have to start working on your insulin resistance and inflammation. And um, Stress is a very important factor. You have to have to have a stress management regime every day, non-negotiable. So you know your breath work, your pranayams, meditation, doing something that you love, the me time, you know, doing something that you enjoy, hobby, spending time in nature, grounding, you know, just being connected to the earth, grass, sand, just 20, 30 minutes a day, mm. taking sunlight in the morning. Also working out, I feel. Absolutely, I'm coming yeah. to that. So uh, working out again, I'll, I'll come to that. So when you're doing, when you're taking sunlight, so you're exposing yourself to a lot of prana and energy which nature has to offer you. And that starts healing your body in a lot of ways. There are a lot of electrons in the nature which actually your body absorbs and starts healing you. So that's one thing. Sleep is important. So if you're not sleeping well, you're not clearing the toxins, your body's not detoxifying well and it's all going to keep recirculating back. Exercise, extremely important. Extremely yeah. important to manage insulin resistance, inflammation, but then exercise has... Um, you have to be very careful in PCOS to work out because if you if you're somebody who's very stressed out who has anxiety somebody who's really dealing with a lot of emotional and mental issues right now doing any intense exercise is going to add to your stress hormone mm. and it's going to stop your weight loss it's going to stop your uh, healing and it's going to add more inflammation to your body so for people like these for, for women who are coming with a lot of stress already and you just see the body is a very stressed out body they have pains they have aches there's lots happening inside so then you tell them to get into more restorative workouts like yoga and pilates and just go for a walk or swim or do something that your body enjoys in more organic ways so dance mm -hmm. it's a very feminine thing so i tell my clients i said you know why don't you just go and join a dance class maybe once a week it's so feminine yeah you know so you you meet your feminine side that ways and you feel better about yourself so it's also holistic it's mind it's body it's you know eating right it's basically taking care of yourself PCOS is taking care of yourself if you want to heal the hirsutism and acne you have to actually go within and do everything for yourself that you need externally internally taking help of all the professionals who can help you but it's you you have to focus on yourself and 
um, with hirsutism there are certain herbs which help very well so DHT lowering herbs so saw palmetto is good but then there, there are ways to do it you can't do it for a long time you have to do it for a short time and certain ways the stinging nettle there's fenugreek so when you have these herbs coming in, you know, in your body, in, in, when you're ingesting them either through a good quality supplement or through food, you kind of lower inflammation, insulin resistance, and then hirsutism starts getting better. But I would like to ask Dr. Jeshri, how does she work with PCOS? How do you like, kind of help PCOS women with the external hair growth? You know, because they want immediate results. They want the hair to not be there. So like, how would you kind of help them with that? So, um... No, first, the first part is counseling, you know, yeah. you have to sit and, you know, you've put it so brilliantly and so beautifully that it is taking care of yourself, you know. So loving yourself and taking care of yourself is so very important. So that holistic thing, I do ask them to lose weight if they are on the obese side. I do try and counsel them really well on that because if I want to do a laser hair removal, on a person who has PCOS, if their BMI is way too high, they will not respond to the laser. Mm. All right. So that again, I throw them back to or send them back to the nutritionist yeah. and say, okay, you need to get your weight sorted. Okay. Temporary things like shaving and, you know, epilation, you can do. Mm. Okay. Shave in the direction of your hair. Do not sh dry shave. You know, make sure your razor is very clean. Make sure you're always dipping things in hot water and then using them. Use a good cream lather, then shave and never go this way. Always go this way, mm -hmm. you know. Those are your uh, quick ways of getting your hair off because it does sort of play with your mind yeah. and you lose your confidence yeah. and all that. So do these little things. Epilation is very safe. You, get, yeah. you have these very uh, good epilators these days, yeah. so you can use them. Uh, when you shave, you do not get back thick hair. That yes. is a big, big myth, okay? It's just like, you know, you've um, not uprooted the entire tree. It's just on the you've, top. you've removed it from the top and that's why when it grows, you feel that roughness and you feel as if it's growing thick, but actually, and when you wax or thread, you're removing it from the root and that is why it takes longer to come back and it feels smooth. Mm. So that is a myth, so you can do it. But ultimately, you will have to, A, uh, do your medication, do your right nutrition, do your uh, stress management and with all that a lot of hair thins and you can start then your laser hair removal. Mm. So you have to keep in mind that you know a person who it's sad but a person who doesn't have PCOS may take about eight sessions and the hair are gone but if you have PCOS then it is a bit of a struggle and you may need 15, 16 sessions. Mm. So you may need double the number of sessions. Now even after double the number of sessions, your hair will become maybe very thin, very cosmetically acceptable and maybe 80% of your hair will go but that 20% will still remain and you may still need to do a little bit of shaving or a little bit of maintenance. However, if you get your BMI in place, if your weight is in, in order and your stress levels are you know, under check and you're sort of doing um, things just to keep yourself happy, your response to laser is going to be much better. Wow. You know, so that is the reason why, again, it comes back to being holistic. Yeah. And that's the only way you treat her. So, yes, we also give you medication. Mm. We yeah. do give you, you know, a five milligram of finasteride in really resistant cases where nothing is helping, you know, and the hair are really thick and coarse, you know, like a male beard or a male mustache. You know, I do see people like that. And then it really you know sort of crushes you, plays, it crushes you, you yeah. know your confidence is gone and so there you may need to give certain yeah, medication. oral medication as well apart from you know the the so diet the and the other treatment yeah. and the laser and so I need to tell you and people that laser is not the only one sure shot way of getting rid of hair coarse hair if you have hirsutism you have to do everything yeah in fact that's that's uh, so beautifully put up because I have so many clients who come to me and they're like, I want to get this off now because I'm getting married or I'm getting engaged and I can't, you know, I can't have this on my face. Can I do laser? So this was one question I actually wanted to address because mm. I didn't know if laser would work. I, what I know is with coarse hair and if your PC was really active at that time, it's not going to work that much I know. But then I didn't know like, you know, oh, that was that, that's new to me yeah. as well. That once you kind of uh, come down on your weight and you correct your internal health, the laser works really well.